Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So over the last, I would say, 12 to 24 hours, I've been playing around with the FTP server. I do have a video if you want to learn how to enable that for your system. And I just wanted to share really some of the best parts that I found with the FTP server. This absolutely does not include everything. This is just some of the things that I've thought that's been cool over the last little bit while I've been playing with it. Okay, so let's just go ahead and jump straight into the video. Okay, so once you are connected into your FTP on your PlayStation 5, you will see the following file structure. The very first folder that I want to go into is going to be over here on dev. And then if we scroll down a little bit, it's going to be this S flash zero. And so with this S flash zero, absolutely you should back this one up. This is part of the NOR chip, and this was used in the past, obviously, to revert back on a PlayStation 4 to a previous version of the firmware. I don't know if it's going to do any good today, but it's absolutely worth going ahead and making a backup of it if you've got access. And I will drop a link to this page right here in case you want to read more information. But basically, the S flash zero is the Aola serial flash. And then I saw this tweet right here from Michael Kemp that said, NP PS4 app category.txt stores the whitelist that stops us from using certain PS4 games on PS5, edit in the FTP, and we can boot into these games that we weren't necessarily meant to. So he has a couple of samples here of what it looks like prior to editing this file. Here is the Resident Evil 7 teaser demo where it says it's not playable. Again, once you try to launch it, it gives you this message right here. But then according to him, after you add it to the whitelist, well, the game will be able to play. So here he is testing the information and then the game is running as normal. Now, he did provide this list right here to look at the white list file path, and you can definitely go here and check it on your own system. I also checked it over on my system, and in that folder, I had absolutely nothing, as you can see right here. So I wanted to leave that in this video where you can go and kind of check this out and let me know, is there anything in this folder on your PS5? Next up, a couple of kind of low-hanging fruit, and that is in the mount folder. There's obviously disk, and there you can see the disk contents of my BDJB disk that's currently inserted. So the files that was in the ISO that Slayer's Gorby provided to us. Obviously, you can take a retail game and put those into your drive, leave that screen up and running, and then you could FTP and copy over all the files on your actual PS5 retail disc if you wanted to. And I just know that you all want me to do this with Panda Hero Remastered. And then inside of the mount folder here, there's obviously this sandbox that you can see right here. And this is showing NPXS 4140. And so this is basically the Blu-ray player that I'm currently in right now that's running the BD-JB. Now, this was mentioned by Big Boss back in June the 28th, 2022, which was the Blu-ray player app is located right here, which matches that NPX number that I just mentioned. And now while you're in the sandbox, you can obviously select any of these folders here. And you can see they kind of follow this format of app zero to AV contents, dev mount, etc. as I kind of scroll down through some of these. Now, obviously not all of the files and folders are identical in here, but it's kind of follows that structure. And if I look over here inside one of these and I go into the app zero, we can see that there's obviously like the SCE, SYS for the Sony Computer Entertainment System. There's config.json that's in there, as well as there's typically kind of this eboot.bin, which is kind of the entry point. 
point into the application. And now again, inside of the mount, there is the USB zero, and this will just show you the USB drive and the contents of it for anything that's attached, obviously, to your PlayStation 5. So now if you wanted to figure out the different users that you have already on the system, so for example, on my PlayStation 5, I've got two users, we could navigate into this folder right here, and we could see at least where where it stores them so priv cache profile and there is the two profiles that I currently have here and obviously it isn't in plain text but I will show you a way that you can kind of decode which user is which in just another tip that's coming up now, this is also the place where if you wanted to create your own custom images and upload them, then you could do so. Then there is this error folder and it's called history, so error history. And I'm just going to select one that is current. And here is basically the information that comes out of that. So things such as the internal error code, the message buffer, the short error, the suggestion type, and then some of those other things. And so if you wanted to take that title ID, for example, and look up what application that is, I'll provide a link to this site right here, which is basically on the PlayStation Dev.wiki. And if you just do a search for that, then you will be able to tell exactly what application was tied to that. So in this instance, this was the Shell UI2, which is where that error originated. And then underneath MMS, we will find that there is an app.db here. We can drag and drop that to our local computer. And then we really just need to download this application called DB Browser for SQLite. Now I've showed this in detail in other videos for the PlayStation 4. So obviously feel free to check those out. The first thing that we're going to need to do is go ahead and select open database here. I'm just going to point to that app.db that I downloaded. And here is the database structure here. So head over to the browse data. And then we're going to select the table icon info. Now here is all of the different types of games that we currently have installed on our system. So as you can see right here, this has all of the standard applications as well as my games that I've installed. So we could take like Media Gallery, for example. We can see there is a last access time here. There's also a last played date, things such as when it was installed, and then whether or not the application is visible or not. So again, we could take these and we could turn this from a zero to one to make sure that it is shown. And you'll find that by default, Sony hides some of the different applications. Now, for the most part, they're not going to be that useful to us, but you could always download this app.db, come in here to where it says visible and just turn these all to one to make sure you have access to every application that they've hidden. And if you want to know a little bit more about how it navigates to these different pages of the operating system, it's really stored right in here in these two deep link URIs in the hub app URI. So for the browse function is PS now and then browse. We can see some of the other examples in here for like PS remote a play hub goes to main. So anyway, very interesting stuff inside of this file. And also note that you can just come in here and add a new row in order to maybe play with and explore some of these options and see what you can find. And so once you have made your changes, just go up to write changes here and then upload that back over to your PlayStation 5. And then there's a ton of questions always around blocking the PlayStation 5 updates. So I did want to mention this here is that if you come into your update folder here and you create two of these directories, which basically is named the ps 5 updatepup as well as the ps 5 updatepupnetemp which I just showed you just a second ago, which was in the source code for 
the way that we were blocking it on the PS4. That absolutely just does not work here. So if we do that and we come in and we even look at the permissions of the file, we can see that it's set as 755. Now, a lot of folks have asked, can you now change the permissions in order to remove that right access? That way it will stick. And the answer to that is absolutely not. So I can come in here, remove everything, and then I go back and check the file attributes again. Well, it resets it back to 755. So no, you can't do that. And then the questions around creating a PS5 update.pup with a zero file size, does the permission stick there? Here is the file attributes by default. Again, changing these and trying to manipulate these in any ways just comes back to a reset. And if you go to the user AV contents photo, for example, you can come in here and if you wanted to extract the image that the system has made, or maybe you've made yourself through the controller, you can come into maybe a game here. So photo, and then we've got CUSA and PUSA. If we look at one of the files here, we can see that it creates a JXR for the photo that it took. Now these can be open natively in Windows. So I'll just download this file over to my computer. And there is exactly what that looks like after it has been downloaded and ran. Now the same can be said for the thumbnails, also that same sort of format. And then finally for the videos here, this I'll just pick a video here and what you'll find is that these are stored in the WebM format. So again, if you've got like VLC player, you can easily just drag and drop these to your desktop and they will play. Here is foreclosed after I got a trophy. Next up is where the applications are stored. So that's over here in user and then in the folder called app. And if we go into one of the PlayStation 5 titles here, you'll see that we have basically an app.crc, the app.json, and then a few other files. But more importantly, what you'll find is the app.package. So this is the package file for the application. Obviously, we can't do anything with those right now. Now, and if you want to look up what the title ID is, so for example, this one is PPSA 01631, just head over to Google and then put that into the search and press enter. And then what you'll see is, is that it'll come back with a couple of different matches. In this instance, this is obviously going to be Marvel Avengers. So sometimes it is helpful to get that information this way. But again, I do have another way that you can get that information, which I'm going to show you in another tip. So the application metadata, which is things like the background image and so forth, is just over here in app data. And here I'm just going to pick a title that is a place station 4 title and I'll just copy all of these over to my local hard disk drive and we'll go into the icon 0 and so there is the icon that's shown on the PlayStation 5 main menu if we go over to maybe the pick 0 or pick 1 this is just the background image and so going back to if you have a couple of different profiles on your machine if you go into home you will see these two folders right here and if you go into one of them for example you will see this kind of structure so down at the very bottom is a username dot dat if you download that to your hard drive and you open it well that will tell you what the username is of that logged in user. So now you can use this information for that previous tip. Now also while you're in here, you may want to go into the save data folder here and then just back all of this up to your local hard disk drive. Again, this save data is not going to work with any console, but at least it will work with your console and with your account that you have on there. So again, you can't really do a lot with this right now, but it is kind of nice that you could make a backup of your own save games and store them on your local computer, especially because you can't have PSN or anything like that that does kind of cloud backups or cloud saves right now. And if you kind of go into one of these, you can see for this, for example, is a Metal Gear Solid save game file. So 
definitely worth taking a look at and saving to your local hard disk drive. Now, there's also metadata that's also stored too. So if you go to save data underscore meta, you go into the user folder here. There you can see some of that data. So here is Little Big Planet, and these are just the save icons. So I can take those to my hard drive and then open one of those files up. And there you can see it's just, again, the save data icon. And so to manipulate some of the trophy information, it's just under trophy and then data here. If you go into this SCE TROP, there you'll see the TRP summary dot dat. So you could take this if you wanted to download it and then open it up in Visual Studio Code or something like that. In here, you could come in and if you wanted to modify the trophies that's currently earned, so like a thousand, two thousand, maybe three thousand here and save this file and put that back on the PlayStation 5, then it will show up inside of your trophy menu. And that's exactly how I got this to show up, that I had 1,000 platinum trophies and so forth. And I did mention in this tweet that this does stick, meaning that if you play another game, such as Panda Hero Remastered, and you earn some trophies, this keeps updating regardless. So it isn't kind of a hack for a one and done. It will be updated as you earn trophies after the fact. So game patches are obviously put right over here in this patch folder. Right now, I have installed four game patches, but they have been for PlayStation 4 titles, simply because a lot of the PlayStation 5 games that I've got, the patches that are out is for a higher firmware version than 4.03. But this is where they are located if you want to take a look at them. And then finally, if you want a little bit of an easier way to see what the title IDs and how they're mapped up to the games, you can go into this Play Go and then go to App. And so basically, here is the title ID for Far Cry 6. Here's another one here for the Observer game. And then this one over here for my God of War PS4 disc. And so thank you so very much for watching. I greatly do appreciate you. Subscribe to the channel. I've got tons more content coming out just like this. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Michael 